and welcome to my length retention journey. Ooh, I struggle to say that. <laughs> I'm back again like flu season. I broke records while loose leaf and I'm coming now. My... So I didn't want to call this my length retention tips. And I don't want to come off like I'm trying to tell you what to do or that I'm trying to tell you. Hey, you need to stop doing things your way and do things my way. <laughs> that sounds crazy to me. So... I'm just going to be sharing the things that I've done to help with length retention for me. Um, if you're interested in hearing about that, then stay tuned. The first thing that I did in, um, in, in the first thing that I did to help aid in length retention was I pulled away from heat. I pulled away from heat for a nice little minute. I want to say it was over a year, well over a year, that I just didn't use heat in my hair. Um, because my journey was just starting and I knew that I wanted to see growth and I wanted to see it um, faster. And not that these things caused my hair to grow faster, but what these things that I was doing um, kept my hair and my ends from breaking off like how they used to before I started doing things this way. Which could give the illusion that your hair is growing faster. But it's not growing faster. It's just you're retaining length. You're retaining more length than what you may have in the past. So it seems like it's growing faster, but it's just growing Okay, so after I turned away from the heat, the next thing I started to do was to amp up some regimens. So I know the natural hair community has been a thing for a really long time, but I'm just now actually getting, just a few years ago, just really getting into understanding um, a lot of, you know, I started, um, I started doing like the moisture layering. So I would go out and I would buy like leave-in conditioners, deep conditioners, masks, um, moisturizing shampoo and clarifying shampoo because I learned that, that that's there's a difference there, I guess. But there's moisturizing shampoos and there's clarifying shampoos. Um, and I went in and buy all that stuff. And then I started just wearing my hair in natural protective styles so for a real long time i would just strictly twist braids i would do my i would do my wash routine then my layering routine and then i would braid it up or twist it up and i would leave it like that and i wouldn't take it out so even if i had somewhere to go Either I, if it was some somewhere that really required me to look something like something, I would just untwist them for that 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 time that I had to go do whatever I had to do, and then I would come back home, twist it right back up. So anywhere else, like a Walmart, Target, anywhere else that I needed to go, I kept them twisted. I would just like put them in a ponytail, put a beanie on or something like that. And I think I mentioned that in my um. Like a recent video that I did of like old wash and go styles. Like <clears throat> like realistic old wash and go styles. And that's how I used to wear it. And yeah, I looked undone for the most part. But I was in a place in my life where I was like, you know. I did end up getting into a place in my life where I wasn't. I wasn't put together according to like trendy culture looks you know what i mean so i was just doing my own thing because i was trying to get my hair back i was trying to get my thickness back my length back my curls back because because of my past my past my curls wasn't that little wavy stuff that i used to have that wasn't my natural curl pattern that was damage you know what i'm saying um so my curl wasn't right my thickness wasn't right my length wasn't right everything was wrong so i had to I had to backtrack and just, there was a phase where I just was out looking like Felicia. As far as my routine goes, I would try to wash my hair once every week or two. Um, it wasn't always, it didn't always happen like that consistently. Sometimes I would braid my hair up and I would keep it like that for weeks before I would go in and do it over. But 
whenever I did do my wash, my wash days, so I would use a clarifying shampoo to, you know, to clean my hair. And then, um, or I would use a moisturizing shampoo to what I guess supposed to add moisture to your hair and not so much strip it. Um, then after I wash my hair, I would put a conditioner in, a deep conditioner, a mask or something. And I would put that on my hair, let it sit for like an hour. I never did like the five, 15 minute thing. I would sit, let it sit for an hour, two hours, three hours. Sometimes it would just be a really long time. I would let it sit and I would put the little plastic bag over my hair or a plastic bag or a shower cap or whatever. And I would put that on my hair and I'll wash that out. And then after I would wash that out, then I would do my layering with the products that I was going to keep in my hair. So I would use a liquid cream, a liquid leave-in, a cream leave-in, and an oil and a grease. Now, I didn't always use both liquid and cream. Sometimes I would just use a cream. I don't think I started using liquid leave-in until I started doing my wash and goes. But before I started like doing, because now... I'm more strictly just wash and goes. I don't really do the twist out, braid out thing anymore. Um, but back then, when I was still just keeping my hair braided up, I think I was just using straight uh, creams. And I would sometimes mix it. Like, I would do, like, a cream, and then I would do an oil, an oil, like a daily oil moisturizer, like a pink lotion. I think Cantu has one. I would, like, layer it. And then I would put an oil over it. I would put like a thick coating of oil over it after I applied the leave-in or and whatever else cream I, I put. And then I would coat it with the oil, which is supposed to seal everything in. And then I would twist it up and braid it up. And then after I twist and braid it up, I would go and I would take my ends and I would get a grease and I would coat my ends with the grease it's like like a an extra thick layer of coating over my ends and that's what i would do um whenever my hair was braided whenever after i that's how my wash day would look so when i started doing my wash and goes i would um you know do the same wash routine that um i would just talked about and then I would do the same process, but instead of just leaving it at that, I would just do the gel. I would put gel on top. So I would um, use a cream. This is how I first started. I would do like a leave-in cream. Then I would do an oil. Then I would put the gel on. But anyway, um, that's how I started doing my wash and goes. So I still would keep moisture underneath the gels. So that also helped. Trims is what I'm about to get onto next. So my trims, I don't put my trims on a strict schedule. Like I know people, you know, say, oh, trim your hair every quarter or every, you know, six months or whatever, but which is six months is like twice a year. Um, but some people trim it like every three months. Um, I've never trimmed my hair that often. When I was doing my length checks, I realized that my hair only grow it takes about three months for me to get like a full inch sometimes you know what i mean like sometimes i would check my hair three months later i would check it again and i would only have like an like an inch or so of hair so it's like it wouldn't make sense for me to go in and trim my ends every three months because it seemed like it took me about three months just to get an inch anyway so it wouldn't make sense for me to go in and cut at it like every three months take another inch off because at that point, I would be taking away my my growth. You know what I'm saying? The length that I was retaining, I would be cutting it off. So, I scrapped the whole, like, nah, that every three months thing ain't going to work for me. Now, hold on. I'm going to have to start a new recording because this one is about to stop. <laughs> All right. So, instead, so instead, I would trim my hair once or twice a year. Um, and that is because I usually don't straighten my hair. Um, I think... For me, I decide my trims depending on what my hair went through that year. You know what I mean? Like, if there's like a year where I straighten my hair more than usual, then I would do 
I would probably do more than just a trim or two. Um, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I would always kind of decide based off what my hair went through that year. So I don't put heat on my hair at all. Um, the only time that I do put heat on my hair is whenever I'm straightening it. And I only do that once or twice a year. But I only straighten it when I've noticed like a good amount of length. Then I'll straighten it so I can be like, oh, okay, this is what my hair looking like now. But if my hair is still the same, like if the length isn't much different, I kind of, it's kind of, for the reasons why I straighten my hair, it would defeat the purpose. You know what I mean? Because I don't straighten my hair necessarily just to have it straight. I'll straighten it so that I can see how it much is grown because you know you can't tell as much as just like taking a piece of hair and pulling it down i want to see like my whole head what it looks like straight i don't use heat at all besides when i'm straightening my hair so i don't diffuse i don't blow dry my curls i strictly air dry every single time whether it's whether i'm doing a twist out braid out or if i'm doing a wash and go I, I, uh, you know, I let it air dry, um, because, you know, that keeps the heat off of it, you know, so that, that's been a major, that's been real key in, in my length retention is just kind of keeping heat, you know, plugging heat out of it and only doing it whenever I straighten my hair. So I trim my ends once or twice a year, usually around the time that I straighten it, um, this time I did do a trim just not too long ago. That video that I posted about the link check. The day that I recorded that video is when I trimmed it. Because I don't upload. I usually don't upload till like a few days after I recorded it. Which is something I really need to get better about. So yeah, that, that's that. So I talked about um, how it started. The routine. The deep conditioning, liquid conditioning, cream conditioner, oil, the twist, the braids, the trims, how many times I straighten it, and how I do moisture underneath my wash and go. So, um, and yeah. So the products that I've used for the most part have been African Pride, ORS, of course. Um, and um, so yeah, it's working. You know what? What I've been doing, it's been working for me. Um. The journey that I'm on is still a journey. It hasn't ended. It's still going on. Um, I'm seeing a lot of growth, but it's still happening. You know, the growth didn't stop, you know, and obviously if I go through any setbacks or I change up anything, I'm going to be sharing that here on the channel too. So this is like me sharing my journey here on YouTube. Um, hopefully I don't run into no setbacks where I start noticing my hair is like falling or getting short or anything like that. But I'm going to record it all the way here and hopefully somebody can see my journey and see what I'm doing and maybe decide like, hey, maybe I should try that or maybe I should do that. And, you know, it could be helpful to somebody or not, you know, because I do believe that everyone's journey is different and what what may be working for you may not work for anybody else. What you may be doing may look completely different from what everybody else is doing. So, I just like to let you know that this is what I do. This is what helps me. And if you want to try it, you're welcome to try it. And if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, then that's your journey. And you have to figure out what does. So, with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, hopefully you subscribe. Hit the like button. If not, neither one of those then I enjoy I appreciate you for stopping by anyway and I will see you guys in the next video